all year round, 2023 offered a wide variety of fantastic television, and I didn't watch nearly enough of it. So while I cannot keep up the tradition of a top 10, I still watched enough TV shows that I absolutely loved and have stuck with me. So my name is Ren, and this is my top five best TV shows of 2023. Welcome back, TV family. Thank you for joining me to count down my top five television shows of 2023. As always, this is not a definitive list. It is as personal and as subjective as lists get. These are the television shows, the series, and stories that have stuck with me and spoke to me on a personal level level. And like I said in the intro, I have not kept up a good TV watching habit this year. So I would love for you to start the conversation with your top five, your top 10 television shows, because I want to know what else is out there that you think I would love. And we got immense variety this year. My list alone has HBO Max, Disney Plus, Prime Video, even Apple TV. So without any further ado, let's get started with number five. Shrinking is for me the surprise of the year when it comes to television shows. I had no plans to watch this show. I didn't even know this show existed. And it is one of the smartest series I have watched in recent years because of the way it tackles depression from the perspective of a depressed therapist. A man who has crumbled personally and professionally since the passing of his wife. And so it's about him building himself back up. And the way the show tackles its drama and comedy balances it out extremely well in really smart ways because it observes the faults and the struggles each character goes through as individuals and as a collective, and it uses that as fuel for the drama, and the way it pays off in comedic ways bounces from the relationships and each individual dynamics. Jason Siegel is excellent at bringing that balance to the forefront, and Harrison Ford gives one of the best performances he has given in years. He is absolutely hilarious in this show and i love discovering the ways people keep their grief and their daily struggles inside from one another and the way these characters understand one another is what gives way to great comedy because they can relate to each other in their struggles in their faults there's enough comfort in there in those friendships between boss and employee, between two therapists, between a father and a daughter who have fallen out because he has struggled so much for a year since he lost his wife without realizing his daughter also lost her mother. And because there's such comfort, because these characters know each other on such intimate levels, they are comfortable enough to call each other out on their shit. And that is extremely funny, but it also manages to be profound and really analytical as well. It doesn't really put anyone down. It offers an uplifting story of being okay to struggle day in, day out, on a bigger scale, and even in small things, the small things daily that can be triggers and that can bring us back down. But it's all about that effort to be better to ourselves and to the ones around us. The writing, the real little misadventures that characters find themselves in, it's immensely entertaining, it is joyous, and it's extremely wholesome from beginning to end, and I'm so happy we're getting a second season. If you have not found Shrinking yet, make it a part of your TV viewing habits. Warrior Season 3 is the absolute epitome to shrinking, mostly because this is a show that on the height of its powers has just been 
canceled and we're not getting any more seasons. This is the little hidden gem that HBO Max tried to hide away for years and now it has paid off. This is based on an old TV show called Kung Fu that basically producers stole away from Bruce Lee and now his vision is being brought to life. From the amazing martial arts to the incredible world building, this show is essentially a story about the beginning of America as an immigrant story. And you have all these factions, all these gangs, basically these mobs that ran San Francisco, but all of them are kick-ass martial artists. And this might have been just the best season yet. Not only is the action incredible, the stunts are fantastic, but on a personal level, it is the series, the season that has challenged emotionally and literally the lead character Hassam in the best ways, where he's struggling to balance being loyal to his clan, to his tongue, and rescuing his sister, the leader of the rival tongue. His whole mission to come across the sea to America was to rescue her. And it builds all these dynamics in such interesting ways, where he can't find ways to satisfy any sides or even himself. This show just builds and builds this tension and drama on a micro and macro scale. It's essentially Game of Thrones level of drama, but instead of having sword fighting and dragons and all these fantasy elements, it is kick-ass martial arts with all the violence and the sex and the political machinations that you come to expect from quality television. It really is a shame that the show doesn't keep going. I hope someone else picks it up, but Warrior is a show you must watch if you have not yet. It's a show about legacy, dynasties, betrayal, and loyalty, and the way it conveys all these elements, bringing it together into this stirring pot of San Francisco is kick-ass martial artists. It's a show about legacy and dynasties, betrayal and loyalties, and how it mixes all these elements together in the stirring pot that is the city of San Francisco as it is becoming a city in the first place. And you see the struggles of the people, of the government, and you see all these elements of prejudice about the people coming to America. Is It is, in essence, an immigrant story and it does all the things that I love with this story by pulling off incredible stunts, incredible martial artists, and being a model for how to pull these elements off on television in a big scale without feeling cheap and having story integrity. Daisy Jones and the Six is not only one of the best series of the year, it managed to deliver the best album of the year by far. I love 60s, 70s, 80s rock and roll, and this show is the epitome of all these rock and roll stories we're familiar with, based on the book by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and it's a spectacular odyssey of fame, sex, drugs, and excellent rock and roll. The cast is superb in this show, from Riley Keough to Sam Claflin, who is now having this Claflinescence as he deserves. And what is particularly great about this show is that it takes all the tropes, all the cliches that we're familiar with when it comes to either fictional or real life rock and roll stories, and it pulls all those tropes in the beginning. The show is framed as an interview of the band years after they disbanded because the band in itself, Daisy Jones and the Six, is based on the writer's experiences growing up being a fan of Fleetwood Mac. And you can see all the similarities in their sound, in their harmonies, in the way the band's dynamic works. And it's always so interesting, but the unraveling of it all, the trickle-down effect, the ripples that they have in each other's lives that we're also familiar with, they're pulled off at the beginning of the show. And so it makes the rest of the journey unpredictable and so emotionally investing because it dives into the dichotomy between 
our personal aspirations and our artistic aspirations. In a lot of ways, it reminded me of the Fablemans last year and how it discusses the balance that we must thrive for as artists and as people. And when we have such strong motivations to achieve more on an artistic level, what do we leave behind? And that's what the show explores through its characters, through the fantastic music. And it tells this grand story of America, the music scene, how music evolves, how people, how artists evolve because of their investment, of everything they pour their lives into their artistry, in this case, into their music. And it's such a fantastic show in the way it tackles all these different elements from all these different perspectives with incredibly emotional backstories, great drama, again, fantastic music, which I will never get tired of singing the praises of. If you have not listened to Daisy Jones and the Six's only album, Aurora, which came out in the 70s, but actually came out in 2023. We're not getting another show, but if enough people watch it and clamor for it, they will tour as the actual band. And I definitely want to see them live. I would love to see more recognition for this show when it comes to awards contention. And you got all these different perspectives that you can see where the inspirations came from, but the characters become wholly original. Loki Season 2 is our runner-up, cementing not only the entire series as the best Disney Plus had to offer, but also Loki as a character, as one of the best and most rewarding character journeys in all of the MCU, keeping the integrity and the philosophies and thematics of the original season, but expanding on them. If the first season was about Loki learning to save himself, this is now a Loki with so much to lose and learning how he can save others, charting him on a course to make the ultimate selfless sacrifice, where he finally gets his throne, and it's a lonely throne. And Loki is now the beginning and ending of everything. The god of time, the god of stories, who makes sure everyone else gets to dictate their own story. And whereas he who remains looked down upon everything, holding everything down, now Loki holds everything and everyone together. And it holds reality, the entire multiverse up, taking the form of Yggdrasil. Loki who was never a true Asgardian. Loki, who was never a true god. Loki, who always felt underestimated, undervalued, unappreciated in a circle of friends, in his family, outside of reality and time. He can never get anything for himself. And now his choice is to allow everyone to have whatever they decide. Mobius wants to keep working on the TVA or go back to his life with his children, selling water skis. Whatever Sylvie wants to do, she has that freedom. Loki, who at one point wanted to enslave all of Midgard, is now ensuring everyone's freedom. This is not only undoubtedly Tom Hiddleston's best performance in the role, but the series as a whole feels like a satisfying full circle that never cheats its way to get to certain story points. It earns all those beats. It has all these deep conversations with meaning, and it doesn't cheat that meaning because it doesn't offer any simple answers. Loki has to deliver a sacrifice of his own choosing. It is also the most consistently well-written Marvel show because they didn't have any rewrites or any reshoots. The visual identity of this series is so wholly unique and its ideas are always integral to the story and they never get microwaved, they never get rushed, there's not a beat in the story that feels unearned and there's not a moment of resolution that feels unrewarding and how Loki's sacrifice ensures that they can keep going. I don't know that we've seen the last of Loki, but I sure know that all we've seen of Loki has been worth it because it led to this 
finale. And before we dive into my number one show of 2023, it's time for you to start the conversation about it in the comments below. What is your number one TV series of the year? What's your most anticipated TV show of 2024? If you're enjoying this top five, I did one last year about my top 10 TV shows of 2022 and there's many more end of year lists to come in the next few days and beginning of your lists as well so if you're enjoying this video you want to talk more movies and tv with me this is the place to be consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and tv the last of us is my 2023 television champion which will not surprise any of you if you have followed me for at least the beginning of the year. As someone who finds the stories told in the games virtually perfect, stories that have struck such a personal chord with me to the point I even tattooed Ellie's tattoo on me from the second game, both Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann found wholly new ways to tell a familiar story, drawing focus to elements that make the entire watching experience different than the interactive experience of playing through this story, challenging not only the character's emotions, but also our emotions. When you're playing through the game, you are Joel. Whatever Joel feels is what you feel. But in a television show, it paints this morally gray character that has fallen so far off and has become so detached of his own humanity. And it finds all these interesting ways to challenge the character on his journey, finds all the most interesting directions to take each individual character in. But it doesn't find these interesting directions in ways that cheat on who the characters are. It defines each individual character, each individual relationship in such rich ways, such grounded ways, such relatable ways that all those moments feel earned. And so every decision made in each episode slowly builds that dynamic that becomes so precious so important and so integral to who these characters are. Both Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey deliver the performances of the year in a world that feels so fleshed out, so frightening, and that paints humanity in the same way Joel is painted at the beginning of the series. Once you start to show, Joel is the most frightening person alive. And as he slowly finds his humanity again, you begin to see the rest of the world as frightening. The rest of the world is the danger. And that, while not a fresh concept, not wholly inventive, the way it's portrayed, the way it's depicted and illustrated through the point of view of these characters, a weary down man who's lost everything he ever held dear, and a young child who still sees the good in the world and brings back purity, brings back light into the life of this man. Let's him see again that there is something worth saving. That is powerful storytelling. That is meaningful. And you go on this literal and emotional journey with these two characters and that bond becomes undeniable. That's what this show is about. Is about the bonds that we chart and that we create through our own journeys, be it through grief, through despair, through love, familial relationships. And it has all this power to it because of the variety of people they find, a variety of responses different people have to the world unraveling around them. It offers one of the most beautiful and perfectly executed chapters of television ever in a world that is so distraught, that is so despicable, that is so little of beauty in it. And it tells the story of people who find solace in each other. And it's important that that episode comes early in the show because it gives Joel hope. If Bill, who is even worse off than him, can find a light, can find a strength, a reason to keep going challenges Joel to see the world in a whole new way. It's profound and it allows the character's vulnerability to shine. It offers so much to these actors to perform on screen, so much more than 
the games ever could. Because again, we're, we're Joel's point of view. We are Ellie's point of view in the second game. And all these emotions, all these themes, all the richness in this tale are carried by the performances in this show. It is one of the most beautiful stories ever told. It is one of the most harrowing stories ever told. With so many moments in each individual episode, it is by far the thing that made me love movies and TV storytelling the most. To the point, I'm incredibly jealous. I will never get to write something like that. Because of all that, The Last of Us comes in at number one. Those are my top five favorite television shows of 2023. Thank you so much for watching, television family. I cannot wait to see what television shows you loved in 2023. So start the conversation down there. And big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel. Many more end of year videos to come along with some shorts. And I hope to see you there. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies and TV.